All right, it's time to take this thing off the trailer finally and get a couple things done. So we need to do the steering wheel, more stock steering wheel and handbrake. So I have a SL something. I'm not sure what the company was. I'll check in a second. The weld on dual caliper bracket. So we're not gonna go crazy like the SR20 car and do Willwood dual calipers and Chase Bays Hydro, things like that. Just gonna do a handle I have laying around with a Willwood Master. And we're gonna weld on a second caliper, a second factory caliper. And then we'll just run some lines and hook it up. We'll be good to go. Here's a handbrake I have laying around my pile of random parts. So I do have a Willwood Master, 0.6, whatever. I'm gonna get rid of the factory handbrake, pull the shoes out, pull the handle out, things like that. First thing to do is obviously get the trailer hooked up and pull this thing off finally since the last drift event. I got the package here. It's uh, you probably can't see it. SRS Concepts. So SRS Concepts makes a weld-on bracket. Try to pull that up. All right, so you make weld-on brackets that go onto the back of the hub here, so on the trailing arm. So essentially, it will sit like here, and then I'll bolt on another carrier and caliper over here on this side. Now, like I said, I don't want the factory e-brake, pull this rotor off, get rid of all the e-brake hardware, pop this off, and then we'll grind whatever we gotta grind. Don't remember what's back there. I'm pretty sure I gotta get rid of the wheel speed sensor, so I'll get rid of that. All the ABS stuff, rip that out, cut it out, grind it, then weld this in. Here's what we're working with. Got the dust shield, the e-brake shoes, everything else off, the calipers hanging here. So essentially the bracket's gonna sit on top of this and over the ABS hole. Gonna try to get this off, it looks super crusty, so hopefully it comes off easily. Clean it up, pop that out, and then I can start cleaning this area and I'll see where the caliper sits. It's not really straightforward where it's gonna be so i'm gonna most likely slap this rotor back on and tack it in place so it's at least centered with the rotor well that's a first i got the bolt out luckily but i don't think the rest of the sensor wanted to come out rock and i guess it's gonna sit like this something like that not sure why it has these little nubs on it but I guess it's the correct spacing, I don't know. I'm gonna bolt the caliper on to this bracket and then, yeah, I'm gonna put the caliper on this bracket and slide the rotor back on and try to tack this in place. I'm bolted to the shock so I can drop this trailing arm and actually fit my head in here. Alright, don't think the welds are going to come out great because there's no gas.
got a couple ugly tacks in there. I'll take this off, take that off, and then I guess try to weld it. If it's not coming out good, I might just stop and then get a gas refill before I do anything else. Here it is with the rotor and the bracket off. I'm gonna try to fill all this. Here it is, all welded. This side was a little sketchy because there's a hole there filled with like a rubber sensor that's stuck in there. Yeah, so don't see this ever coming off. I'm out of gas, so I started spattering and getting messy at the end here. But at least it started off okay. Just gonna get this side button up. I mean, you get the gist of it. It's gonna be the same on the other side. Take it all apart, tack it, and then take it all apart again and weld it. I'll probably uh, mount the hydro and route the lines for the second calipers. Yeah, so gonna throw the rest of this back on and just have the caliper kind of sit here while I do the rest of the stuff. All right, next thing that we need to address is this steering wheel. It's uh, just a factory wheel and it sits pretty far away from where I sit. So it's kind of annoying. It's also like really big. So I've got a vertex to put on there. So what we're gonna do is pop this off. I believe it's uh, just two T25 torques on the back and then this pops off and it's like a 16 or 17 mil in the center. And then you just take the wheel off, slide the hub on and bolt up the wheel. So got the airbag off and unplugged the airbag sensor. Normally this would be an easy job, but it looks like somebody already tried to remove it for some reason and they stripped the screw on this side so i ended up just loosening this side and snapping the right side off but it doesn't matter i'm not using this wheel ever again there it is completed hubs on wheels on i don't have an alignment so i know for sure this thing is probably not even gonna be straight it's probably gonna be like this or like this so now is the fun part i gotta figure out where i'm gonna throw this thing so things have escalated. Looks like I am gonna have to mount my handbrake here. So I went ahead and I've taken the center console and everything apart. I made a quick plate that the handbrake is gonna mount onto. These bolts are gonna be welded on the back side, And then it's going to sit something like this. And then that should be good enough. I'll also put a support on the side of it just so it doesn't wiggle uh, side to side. And when that's all done, I'll bolt this back in and start making the first line off the master. So here it is, all welded up. Couple welds on the bolts. And then I mark the forward orientation, clean up the edges, so it's gonna sit like this. And you bolt it in. Also have this extra piece from this scrap piece of metal that's probably gonna get welded underneath it like that as a support. Probably shorten it a little bit. Going to mock this up in the car and probably toss a couple tack welds and see how it's looking. All right, there's the handbrake mounted. All good, not going anywhere. Started mocking up the interior a little bit, made some cuts. That's all right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start bending some brake line, push it through and then I'll have to bleed it by myself, which is going to be interesting, but... So I've gone ahead and flared a couple lines. So if we look here, I uh, have the handbrake line ran. And it's going to go somewhere around here, down into the through the floor. I'll leave a little extra. I've gone ahead and made the uh, lines back here. I don't know if you can 
see it, but there it is. So it's going from a uh, factory, like I just got a new uh, rubber soft line. And then it goes into the hard line and it's gonna tee somewhere here. So it's gonna go down and then tee off here, go to that side and go to this side. And I should be able to bleed it. One issue I did have is that I have a uh, two driver's side calipers, I believe. So this side, you can see the bleed screw, or I guess they're passenger side calipers, but this side, you can see the bleed screws on the top. Other side, the bleed screw is on the bottom, so I can't bleed it on the car, but no biggie. I'll just take it, the caliper off the car on that side, and then the uh, bleed it upside down so the bleed screws on the top and then throw it back in. You go to the exhaust to uh, flange fell apart and hit the floor. But here is what I have. So soft line to the hard line and then the line from the handbrake comes down uh, about over there above the resonator and over here. So now I just need to figure out where I want to put it and then probably uh, I'll have the T somewhere up here next to this uh, factory handbrake line. And then I can just bring this over, hook it up. I don't, like I said in the last video, I don't know why this car is covered in oil. A produce on it, like sprayed it with oil. I don't know what's going on here. But so I finished the driver's side, but the passenger side, because it's upside down, obviously, because I have two... Uh, two passenger side calipers that I'm using. Um, this hard, this soft line won't work because it's, uh, because of how long it is, actually ends up hitting the uh, spring bucket or spring perch. Went ahead and made a tight 90. I'm gonna go ahead and have this a little further out instead of directly in the side of the caliper. It should still work fine. It's just that I need a, because of, you know, because I have only two, the same side caliper. Here's a bit of a better look from underneath the car. If you can see, there's the caliper and then there's the spring bucket. So it's pretty close, but this bend clears it perfectly and there's a little bit of space left. So no worries about hitting it for any reason. Now I just need to do a hard line off of this factory soft line and then still has room to wiggle around. When there's suspension travel, so it doesn't rip off from a entire hard line. And normally you wouldn't have this problem at all. It's just because of the fact that I have uh, two of the same side caliper and the bleed screw is on the wrong side. If you have one of each caliper, you're not gonna have this problem. So ignore this part. But because I got sent to the same side calipers and I don't wanna buy another one or have to return this because the shipping is more expensive than the caliper gonna have to make it work button up this line over here and then tie this up somewhere so it's not moving around all right this side is done as well as the other side calipers are on welded attached lines are ran everything's finished handbrake is run have the nice uh, like 90 off here goes into the floor right there and then tease off where I showed you. Unfortunately, I can't really bleed this thing because I'm by myself and I don't really have any uh, like power bleeders. I don't think I'm gonna put together the interior on camera just because I want to. I want to get it done and nobody really wants to see. If you want to see a video on taking apart E36 interiors and putting them back together, I'm sure there's like a million videos. I do want to finish the intake on this car though because I borrowed the other E36's intake for the drift event. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a four inch intake. The factory size on uh, the MAF for a 328 is three inch, but I wanna make a four inch just because I wanna see if it's any louder or not, if it makes a difference. So I do have some uh, leftover four inch from the uh, SR20 car exhaust. So I'm gonna try to whip something up quickly. So I finished cutting up a few pie cuts. Here is the finished piece, or I guess not finished, just uh, tack welded together. It's gonna sit something like this. I have a uh, three to four inch 
a silicone coupler for here and then I have a four inch intake that's gonna sit down here. Marked it up, tacked it, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and finish welding all the way around and then slap it in. finished intake pipe it's super hot right now so i'm gonna let it cool down before i do anything but yeah should be good no holes or anything we'll let it cool down and then we'll throw this on the math and this on the bottom side there the four inch intake and that should be that here it is all right, here it is in the car. Give it a quick hit with a scotch bright, just to clean it up a bit. Still need a uh, clamp for uh, this side and that side, but overall it came out pretty good. Goes where I need it to go. Looks huge in here. I would have done aluminum, but I had this four inch laying around. I don't really want to order a new four inch piece. The, just to go along with the whole, you know, purpose of the car being super budget built, using stuff I have laying around. Ignore the uh, fireworks going off in the background. Yeah, pretty happy with uh, how everything turned out. Like I said, not gonna show the bleeding of brakes and putting the interior back together gonna do that quickly off camera because this car is just eating up all of my time now that the car is where it's at it's uh, pretty good so I'm just gonna let it sit for now and then whenever a drifter and pops up that I don't have my main car this one ready I'll take this out I guess that's it for this one small update engine is ready to go back in just mocked up the turbo for now but I think next weekend I'm gonna go ahead and start that I have all the parts, so it shouldn't be too long of a process, probably a couple of week, weekends, and I'll be ready to rip, go to the dyno, test out the new turbo, see how that is. Other than that, that's it for this one. This car is pretty much done. Slap a few things together off camera, and the next video will probably be putting the SR back in, and then, uh, or make an exhaust for this. I do have to do that. Debating on when or whether I want to do that on camera or off camera. If you guys want to see an exhaust build, I'll film a video. If not, there's hundreds of them. I'll see how I'm feeling when I make it. If it ends up being uh, something I want to show, I'll film it. If not, that'll be it for this car. I'll just keep driving it until it breaks. And get back on the uh, cool cars like the red one. So yeah, that's all for now. Stay tuned for uh, putting this car back together and back on track finally.